I started to get curious about why clouds seemed to be lit more when they were closer to the sun. And uh, I've addressed the issue at a couple of points. Here's a very brief excerpt from a prior video. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Sunday, March 6th, 2016. Close. You'll want to take a look at the clouds, and in particular how they light up as the object gets closer. The lighting behaves in a way that indicates that it is much closer to it than far away in space. The point I made was that none of the sun's light is coherent, and as such, like a candle flame, it doesn't have any control over the direction that it goes to it. It can't focus on its own. Uh, but I did neglect a couple of other possibilities which I am discussing in this video. I've thought of two different things that might affect the light. One was the consideration that some curvature in the atmosphere may be causing the light to focus. I did quite a bit of research on optics, refraction, and a lot of calculations too, only to discover that I was an idiot because there's a very simple thought experiment that could have saved me a bit of time. What I was considering was analogous to starting a fire using a magnifying glass by taking light and concentrating it through refraction on a single area. Well, that area, that focal point, is independent from your perspective. That is, you can view it from any point and that focal point is not going to change. So it doesn't matter what your perspective is, that fire is going to start in the same place. But because we can drive around and look up at the sky and the focal point appears to follow us, uh, it would not be refraction that is causing the lighting effect that I'm seeing. But what about diffraction? Like if I had a candle across the room and I had a bed sheet hanging up in front of me, I would be able to see the brightness of the candle and there may be some light scattered by the material in the sheet causing it to look like uh, an aura, not unlike what the clouds are doing. That seemed to be more convincing to me because no matter what my perspective, there's going to be an intervening layer that diffracts some of the light. Still, I'm forced to reject this explanation as well because in reviewing video footage, including some of the footage I'm putting up now, it doesn't adequately explain why it is we see clouds closer to the sun being less lit than clouds farther away. So how is it that we even came upon the 93 million mile figure as the average distance between the Earth and the Sun? There are a few methods which purport to do this. The most common ones are using Kepler's laws and then more recently, or after Kepler at least, using Newton's laws of gravitation. One of the presuppositions in calculating the 93 million mile figure is that orbital mass is inconsequential to orbital period. This is untrue. The explanation or example that is commonly given is that if you take a watermelon and a grape and drop them at the same time, they reach the earth at the same time barring air resistance. Because we can understand an orbit as a constant state of gravitational attraction, the mass of the watermelon and the mass of the grape appear to not matter. And so what is commonly said is somewhat true, but only in a case where the orbiting bodies have a mass that is negligible as compared to the central object. The Sun is calculated under conventional understanding to have 98 or 99 percent of the mass of the solar system, and so the planets would have negligible masses as compared to the central object. 
However, I challenge the supposition that the sun has as much mass as we attribute to it. That subject and the idea of a cavitation sun is a subject for another video. So that concludes this one. Hope everybody has a really good day and please take care of yourselves.